I'm making gufta curry today. Um, I've already made my gufte, which are made with lamb. Um, to find out how to make those, you can go onto my website and have a look at this video. But to get on with the sauce, I'm just gonna heat up the pan um, with a little splash of oil. Not too much, just warming that through. I'm going to chop up my onion. So this is to make the base sauce or the masala sauce. Now, whenever you do that, make sure you chop up your onion as finely as you can but also try to make sure that all of your chunks of onion are the same size because what you don't want are great big chunky pieces of onion and little bits of fine, finely chopped onion all in the same pan because they're just not going to cook at the same rate together. So I'm just chopping up one onion here. And when I say finely, that's what we're looking for, sort of as finely as you can, nice little pieces. I'm just going to pop those straight in. There you go, so just give that a stir. There we go. So whilst those onions are cooking away, I'm just going to chop up some garlic. Um, again, nice and finely, you want a nice smooth masala sauce and the only way you're going to get that is by chopping everything up as finely as you can. Um, with any dish that you're doing, it really depends on the end result that you're looking for. So for a jalfrezi, for, for example, you'd want a nice chunky sauce. So I would cut my garlic and my onion slightly differently for that dish. But for this, I want a nice smooth sauce. So I've got one piece of garlic there. And the second one. I'm just going to go over it again just to make it a little bit more fine. Sometimes what I do is I just pop it straight into my pestle and mortar and just give it a bash as well. So depending on what you're doing, you can by all means do that as well. Now, whenever I make a masala sauce, I tend to put my onions in first on a fairly high heat, get those cooking, and then I turn my heat down um, because I want the onions to start sweating first and then I'll pop my garlic in when my heat's on a slightly lower heat because I don't want the garlic to burn but I want the onions and the garlic to cook down together. So whilst that's doing what it needs to do, I'm going to get all my other bits and pieces ready. So I'm going to use some fresh ginger, which I'll just be grating straight in. Um, I've got a really lovely piece of fresh ginger there. So whenever you've got a fresh piece of ginger, all you need to do is just wash it. You don't need to spend ages peeling it. I'm just going to grate it straight in. I'm also going to chop a chilli in there. Now with this dish, you can go as spicy as you like or you can go as mild as you like. So this is one of the dishes that I cook for my children all the time because they love meatballs, they love all of that um, meaty, juicy flavour. So when I'm making it for the children, I tend not to put any chillies in because it's, it doesn't have to be hot to be Indian. So again, if you're using chilli, make sure you chop it up nice and finely. If you wanted to go down the hotter route, you could by all means put another couple of chilies in if you want to. Just have it to one side, and then I'll just grate my ginger as well. So I'm using probably about a three or four centimeter piece of ginger. see what I'm doing you don't need to worry about peeling your ginger for ages beforehand you can just grate it straight in what you'll find is if you've got a slightly older piece of ginger it the skin won't grate like this it'll just come away in your hand so you can just throw it away I'll pop that to one side Now the onions will probably take about 15 to 20 minutes. I like to cook my onions, whenever I'm cooking a meat dish, I like to cook my onions to a really lovely dark deep brown colour. And the reason that I do that is that that's where the depth and that's where the flavour comes from. So when you want a meat curry, you want something that's going to be dark, it's going to have that beautiful brown colour. So that's why you need to invest the time in making sure that your onions are cooked down enough. I think one of the biggest 
mistakes people make when they cook Indian food is they just don't take the time to do their onions. If you find that your onions are sticking to the bottom of the pan, don't keep adding lots of oil in there. All you want to do is just add a little splash of water and that will just lift everything off. But we'll keep an eye on this and let this cook for about 15 minutes. Onions have been cooking a good sort of 20 minutes or so now and they're lovely and dark brown. I have added the little odd splash of water just to get them going and just get them not caramelising but just cooking through so they're that nice brown colour. Um, into that I'm going to pour in some tomatoes. I always use plum tomatoes. I like to use plum tomatoes because I think it gives a much thicker, much more robust gravy. Um, the, the tomatoes don't take very long to break down so don't worry that they're not going to break down because they will. They'll break down very quickly. Once your tomatoes have gone in, once you've added that liquid into there, then it's the right time to start going in with all of your other ingredients. I always add my ginger in at this time. Um, a lot of people will fry it beforehand, but I like to put it in now because it's quite a fibrous ingredient. It sort of tends to stick to the bottom of the pan, so I tend to add it now. And I'm going to put my chilli in. It's always good to put your chilli into a sauce so that it doesn't catch the back of your throat while you're cooking. So just pop that in there and stir that through and now's the fun bit now's the bit where I'm going to start adding all of my aromatics and my spices so into that I'm going to put in a teaspoon of salt just for seasoning and again you can put as much or as little as you like in a teaspoon is probably more than enough I'm going to put in a teaspoon of turmeric for that beautiful beautiful yellow um, curry colour and I'm going to put some chilli powder in as well. Not too much because I've also added a whole chilli in there. And some fenugreek or kasuri methi as we call it. And for me, kasuri methi is the iconic curry aromatic. It gives it that lovely earthiness. It gives it that real curry flavour. So now what we're looking for is for all of those flavours, all of those aromatics to come together and create a really thick, rich masala base sauce. And this is probably the bit that, again, you don't want to rush through. Take your time, let the spices get that heat, let them all come together. I'm going to turn it down just a touch. And what I'm looking for is my onions and my tomatoes, all of those spices, everything to melt together to create a really thick, rich masala base. So this will probably take another five or 10 minutes just using your spoon just break anything down that's too lumpy and we'll just let that cook through the masala is looking really nice and thick now everything's come together so I'm just gonna have a quick little taste because it's all about that you know you want that intensity in there so it's nice to have a little check now I'm going to put a touch more salt in. And then that's ready. So once your sauce is looking all thick, then I'm going to start to put in my um, kuftas. So just straight into there. And all I want to do is just coat them initially. And then I'm going to heat a little bit of water up and just pop that in as well, just so that they can start to take on the flavour of the, of the masala. Yeah, they look great. Look at those. That's it, last one in. And just give them a stir. Now, because they've been cooked, they shouldn't break down, but just, just don't, don't be too heavy-handed with them. Now, treat them with a little bit of love and a little bit of care. But they go in there. And we're just going to heat those up. Heat them all the way through so that the flavours start to absorb into that meat. So, on a fairly delicate heat, you don't want it too hot because you don't want them to catch the bottom of the pan. And whilst they're heating through, I'm just going to go and get my water. There we go. I can hear that it's starting to warm through and it's starting to sizzle. So just a couple more minutes and then I'm going to pour in my liquid. Now, at, at this point, some people like to have their um, kufta curry quite thick. So 
you know, by all means, if this is how you want it, then just leave them for a few minutes. Just make sure that they're absorbing a bit of flavour. Then, you, you know, have it nice and thick like that. I like to have mine a little bit loose, so I'm going to add some water into it. But, you know, always cook to whatever pleases you and whatever makes you happy. You don't have to follow a recipe right down to the last sort of word. Play around with the flavours, have a bit of fun and just make it so that it suits you and your family. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in. For me, I think adding a bit of water helps to absorb some of those flavours into those little bites of deliciousness. So, touch more, and I'm just going to let that now cook for five or six minutes on a fairly low heat, so it's simmering away and all those flavours are being absorbed in. So I'm just going to have a little tidy down and um, keep an eye on that. They've been sizzling away for about 10-15 minutes now and they're looking really lovely. The, the sauce has thickened up, which is exactly what I was looking for. So I'm going to give those a stir. They are looking pretty pretty good to me. So I'm going to turn that off. What I always like to do, and you'll probably see this in all my recipes, um, for me it's garam masala goes in right at the end because it brings all of those beautiful flavours that are in there together. So a nice big teaspoon, sprinkle that in, put a little bit more in because, just because. So give that a stir through. And as soon as it hits the, the heat, you can just get those wonderful, wonderful, warming, homely aromatics coming off. It's beautiful. So that's perfect. I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to dish that up. And for me, I like to serve this up um, either with some really, really plain rice because you've got so much flavour already in the gufte and the meatballs and that beautiful beautiful thick thick sauce but if you want to you can also get a bit of naan bread and just dip that straight in which will be just as good look at those they look fantastic so if you've liked this recipe there's loads more on the website so please do have a look and what I'd really like to do is I'd really like to hear what you think of this dish and what you think of other dishes as well so please do leave your comments um, and, you know, give me your your take on, on your sort of meatball dish, if that's what you're into. But I'm going to have, always finish off with some fresh coriander, just to lift that dish. And I'm just going to have a little taste. Because I've made it. Mmm. It's so good. It's so full of flavour. You've just got to give it a go.